Hey everyone, I'm Tim, one of the co-founders here at Modular, and today I'm here with Evan, who's the CEO and co-founder at SF Compute. Evan, how are you doing today? I'm good. Today's a good day. We've got a lot to talk about. We really do. So let's get into it, all right? Let's do it. Tell us a bit about SF Compute. So San Francisco Compute sells big GPU clusters. Right. We're the best price on the market, and we don't force you into a long-term contract, and we pretty much only work with large buyers who are trying to get best prices available. Okay, amazing. We should chat a little bit about, you know, how did we meet? What is the sort of product that we're announcing? Uh, maybe we'll start there. Yeah, so we met in San Francisco. All right, the capital do. of AI. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Yeah. And I think we pretty much immediately bonded right. over, um, look, the market is really expensive at the moment. Yeah. Um, I think pretty much everybody is clear that you need to um, scale up a lot of AI workloads right. um, and that the costs have to come down in yeah. order for any of this to make sense. Yeah, I mean, an on-demand GPU is $10 an hour. Correct. That's right. crazy. $80 you for a node. Yeah. yeah. There's no way that you get successful products that are based on that underlying cogs. Right, exactly. And so what we talked a lot about was how could we maybe build a product in, uh, you know, in AI right. uh, that could help reduce that cost very significantly. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we started. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe taking a step back, talk a little bit about you know, dynamic GPU pricing. You know, why, why does that matter? Why is it important? When we started as a company, yeah. we were an AI lab that was trying to train an audio model. Right. We go out, and the first thing you do as an AI lab, you buy a big GPU cluster. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody in the market required us to buy a year-long contract, right. because yeah. of course they did. Right. Um, otherwise, the vendor would have so much depreciation risk um, that you know, they might go underwater on their loan. Right. And so. Um, Instead, they lock us in mm -hmm. for the long-term contract. They yeah. put all the inventory risk on us, the customer. Yeah. Um, and that's insane, um, <laughs> because what does that make us do? Right. Raise massive rounds, um, you know, deploy way more capital than we can realistically do. Right. So SF Compute um, started to try and allow people to buy shorter increments of compute, yeah. so that way they can get to market. Um, but the bigger your company is, and the more you're scaling up, um, the more that matters. Right. Um, because you can't buy at max peak um, for a year right. um, and expect that to be profitable. Yeah, and I think the thing we've seen change in the market quite significantly has been, you know, you mentioned training. There's, you know, I, I think a few years ago, a lot of people were training models. Yeah. I think that's changing now. Inference has taken over in a very big way. Totally. Uh, and that's changed the market dynamics quite a lot too. So, so you can talk about that. So for inference, um, you've got a load curve that goes up in the day and yep. down at night and typically down on weekends. Right. Um, and if you're locked into a long-term contract at whatever your peak was, yep. and you probably had to get it for your peak, because yep. otherwise you're not going to hit your SLA, mm -hmm. um, then you've got all this idle capacity. Right. And to make your product profitable, mm -hmm. um, you need to shove the prices that you're charging your customer up um, in order to offset the fact that you've got a bunch of you've got a bunch of idle compute. Right. Exactly. Um, but then you're shoving the prices up for your customers, which reduces adoption of your product. Um, and then other people who are not doing this um, end up out competing you in the market and scaling up faster than you um, and winning the market. Yep. That's not great. Yeah, and I think once upon a time. Uh, what customers have told us is they would have used that idle compute potentially for training. Right. But increasingly now, people aren't training to the degree that they were. Exactly. And inference is taking, taking over in a, in a much greater way. Correct. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the product that we built, a right. large scale batch API. We started there. Why did we start there? So we made a product called Large Scale Inference. Um, our main goals here was first, has to be large scale. Right. We have to be able to support <laughs> um, trillions of tokens. Yep. Um, that's a pretty hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing you have to do um, is you have to make that cost competitive right. um, and you have to make it stable. Yeah. The nice thing about batch inference is it's extremely good for synthetic data um, runs for you want to label 6 billion images, yeah. um, you want to summarize um, a bunch of documents and doing that um, as you scale up GPUs is a really big challenge, mm -hmm. one that we were able to do from a hardware perspective and you were able to do from um, a software perspective. Right. Um, and so the combination of that produces a pretty great product. Yeah. So. Essentially what we have is a large scale batch API today. Mm -hmm. We have 20 to 30 of the most popular open source models. Mm -hmm. um, and what's cool about the product is you can essentially set a price and we can help you fluctuate between a GPU price that is radically lower than what you would otherwise get on you know, other large scale clouds. Exactly. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about the large scale batch API product, but maybe what we need to do is just show everyone a demo. So let's demo the batch API. I'm going to walk you through it right now. In order to submit a batch, you make a POST request to the batch's endpoint. In the body of the request, you provide a URL to the input file, as well as a URL to where the output will eventually be stored. 
we support any S3 compatible pre-signed URLs. Not only that, you will also provide your own price per million input tokens and your own price per million output tokens. The higher the price you submit, the faster your batch will be completed. If you've got something that can wait a while, you can get really great prices. Let's also have a look at where the input batch is that we're about to process. The batch is made out of a JSONL file and any additional multimodal files that you need. Since we're working with a model that can understand images, we're going to try and identify Pokemon and their strengths. We're going to submit four batches. As you can see, our batches have now been submitted and their status is now in accepted state. Eventually, the status will move on to compute purchased and then the batches will be scheduled and then processed and then completed. What's amazing about our infrastructure is that if you want, we can scale this up to trillions of tokens and many different use cases across text, image, and video. Finally, our batch is completed and we have the output stored on the URL that was provided. Evan, that was an amazing demo. The product looks awesome. Thanks so much. I think it's a great product. Yeah. So maybe let's walk through a little bit. There's a lot of batch API products out there. What makes this one particularly unique? So first, um, we have the best price inference in the world. Yeah. Um, but then second, um, we're able to scale up um, to thousands of nodes on our side um, and up and down so we can handle trillions of tokens. Yeah, and the dynamic pricing makes it really interesting, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then additionally, modular stack is the most optimal in the world. Yeah. And then a lot of batch inference products, the way they work is that you have to upload all your data yeah. to us um, and then we would just hold it indefinitely. That's not how our system mm -hmm. works. Um, instead, we connect to your S3 bucket and it reads from there, writes from there, right. and then we're done and we don't store anything. So the data resides at the customer. Exactly. Yeah, that's amazing. So let's start to think about what's next for, for modular and, and SF compute. Yeah, so first, we obviously want to do online inference, sort of DeepSeek, Mistral, and so on. But then also, we're just going to listen to customers. Yeah. Um, we want them to tell us what um, features and specifics they need. Yeah, amazing. And I think one of the advantages that, that we share is Modular's platform, you know, uh, today SFC, you, know, you guys have an enormous amount of NVIDIA compute. Mm -hmm. But part of the power of our platform is we can actually bring other types of compute to your marketplace. And so, you know, how are you thinking about that? How are you thinking about AMD and, and other types of silicon? Clearly, we can bring that. Is that something that you're, you're thinking about? Yeah, of course. Because... NVIDIA stack is amazing. We're really excited to work with them. Um, but developers care about the token, the price of the token, right. the latency of the token, the accuracy. Um, and what we want to do is make sure the best hardware wins. Um, and we care about expanding the total supply that we can access. Right. And choice is a good thing. Exactly. Right. Choice is a fantastic thing. Customers tell us they want that. And so you, you know, bringing that to your marketplace just you know, listen, delivers what people want. Exactly. Evan, it was great chatting today. Very excited about our partnership and this product. Go to sfcompute.com slash inference, try it out, give us some feedback. Thanks for being here.